Hello my friends, I'm B and this is B's Intuition. Today we're going to do a reading about um, how do other people perceive your intuition. Um, and I kind of meant this in a way of like, do people like get freaked out by your intuition being like spot on or something? I don't know. We'll see what comes out. Um, Alright, let's just dive right into it. Uh, please and thank you spirit. Um, how do other people perceive the collective's intuition? Please and thank you, Spirit. Please and please and thank you, Spirit. Okay, good, good, good. Let's see. Oh wow, there's quite a few. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. This is a lot. Okay. Um, well, let me make space for all of them. Oh, good golly gosh. Two little curse. <clears throat> okay. Well, first we have five of wands. People could probably feel conflicted about your intuition. Uh, four of Wands. It might be attractive to certain people. Queen of Wands. People probably see you as somebody that is very powerful. Three of Swords. Maybe it's caused you heartbreak in the past. The High Priestess. So people definitely see that intuition of yours. And I think they find it very mystical, quite otherworldly. Six of Swords. Maybe your intuition has helped you leave um, times that were not so ideal. The Fool. Your intuition probably has led you to new beginnings in your life. Eight of Cups. Your intuition may have led you away from certain people or things. Six of Pentacles. It feels like it's supposed to talk about how your intuition has brought you abundance, potentially. The Sun card, so maybe your intuition brings you happiness or maybe some sense of feeling contented. But then again, there could be a certain aura or glow that you emanate that is very much like special and it could be linked to your intuition. The Empress, um, incredibly powerful. Yes, that feels like you're incredibly powerful, but you know how to um, use your intuition responsibly. Bottom of the deck, Queen of Pentacles. Something about your connection to Earth, potentially, with that. Maybe it increases your intuition. Okay, let's just start clarifying. Starting with that Five of Wands. Please and thank you, Spirit. Uh, what do you have for that Five of Wands as to how do other, other people perceive the collective's intuition? Please and thank you. Okay, so that Five of Wands was clarified by the Queen of Swords. This is interesting. I'm almost getting, um, well, there was the first message that was about how when your intuition is like really clicking and maybe you feel something very strongly, like I need to tell somebody something, you're very like straight to the point potentially. Maybe you don't like to beat around the bush when it's like your intuition is telling you to tell other people something. You're like very direct about what your intuition is telling you. Especially, like I also feel like, cause it is clarifying that five of wands. So if you know something through your intuition that could potentially cause 
another person to enter conflict with another person or something could cause conflict potentially in this person's life, hypothetical person. Um, you want to be as direct and straight to the point as possible, especially if, it, if you know that you have a intuitive download that can help somebody. But at the same time, that may come across as maybe sometimes blunt, you know, because maybe your intuit, intuition isn't saying like the nicest thing about what somebody wants to hear. So there's that. But there's also, um, so I'm also getting like specifically like a prophet. Like there's a message here about prophesizing, seeing the future. I feel like maybe that's also like something that people see about you, if, especially when your intuition is really spot on and people can't really explain it. They can sort of see you as a prophet. Interesting. Um, three of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. So yeah, I feel like you are a person of harmony. And so if you see through your intuition that something could be causing conflict or something that, or if a conflict can be avoided, you will communicate that as straightforwardly as possible. Because I feel like at the end of the day, you want harmony. You want people to work together harmoniously and not in conflict. So I feel like, yeah, you very much use your intuition for good. It's like you very much have a sense of doing the right thing. Like if you get an intuitive hit or download and you're like, this person needs to know this information so that they can make maybe the best decision possible given the circumstances or something. Like it's like you want to empower people very much so. And also bring people together and not, not, um, I feel like you very much do not like conflict. And so you try to avoid that as much as possible or help people to avoid that. I'm also getting a message with that Queen of Swords that you can probably see things from a mile away with your intuition. And that could also kind of freak people out too. <laughs> I like that though. I like that a lot. Okay, let's go on to the Four of Wands. He's a monkey spirit. What do you have for that Four of Wands? What is this Four of Wands speaking about when it comes to how others perceive the collective's intuition? He's a monkey spirit. Very interesting. Clarifying that Four of Wands, we have the Knight of Pentacles in the reverse. Knight of Swords upright. Bottom of the deck, Ace of Wands. This is clarifying the Four of Wands, which is usually a card about, well, could be personal milestones, but also could be coming together in union with others or with another person celebrating that so definitely something about celebration so I almost am wondering if people are seeing you being celebrated for your intuition or they know that someday something about your intuition is going to be celebrated I also find that incredibly interesting that it's clarified by the knight of pentacles in the reverse and the knight of swords so these two upright are very sort of opposite energies when it comes to the knights. This is the slowest moving knight in the deck and this is the fastest moving knight in the deck. So when this is in the reverse, it almost is like, um, what's the word? Magnifying <laughs> is like the only word I can think of. It's like intensifying this knight of swords in my mind. And this is actually kind of cool because it's almost saying like people could see that your
fate, destiny is tied to you being celebrated for your intuition. And I feel like through other people's eyes, you're not on the slow track. Yeah, in people's eyes, it feels like you're not on the slow track to achieving that success. In fact, quite the opposite. You're probably on the fast track. And it may be even, this could be a message that once you use your intuition, um, maybe in your work or just in general, trust it more, or the more you lean into it, the more success it could bring and the more celebration of your special abilities could happen as well. Feels like you're very much on the fast track here to experiencing some sort of celebration of your abilities. Or that could just also be people's opinion as well as like, you have such rare abilities that like, it's only a matter of time before people recognize that and celebrate that within you. Ace of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Your intuition could also like be linked to your passion or creativity. Um, like I'm getting a sense of like inspiration, like your intuition could be very much linked to your, to your maybe creative inspirations or just projects or ideas of like what you want to put your energy and time and effort into. And I feel like maybe that you pursuing those things that your intuition kind of directs you towards, that could also be what's leading to success for you. I feel like you definitely let your intuition lead the way in terms of your passions, in terms of your creative goals or projects and stuff. And it feels like it's definitely very much serving you. Okay, let's go on to the Queen of Wands. Please and thank you, Sarah. What do you have for the Queen of Wands? Please and thank you. As for what, oh. <laughs> um, how are other people seeing the collectives? Um, intuition. Please and thank you. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Clarifying the Queen of Wands, we have um, Nine of Wands in the reverse. Maybe you've been doing some work in releasing your past pains, especially the past pains that may be related to love or just difficult situations that you've had in your life. The Nine of Swords came out in this direction. And so did the Lovers card came out in this direction. There's something about overthinking about a soulmate or a choice here. Uh, Five of Wands came out upright. Strength card upright. Bottom of the deck, Five of Pentacles. Let's see, what is this saying? Um, I feel like you very much come across very confident and, and you might actually laugh at this, whoever I'm tapping into, because it's like you have this exterior to others and it feels very much like you're in your power you're maybe even in a boss mode like just like powerful even manifester to a degree like it just feels like you're just like in your element you are confident passionate on your grind doing wonderful things and I feel like on the inside though 
it's constant conflict potentially. So starting out with that nine of wands in the reverse, I feel like you've had a past of a lot of people mistreating you, a lot of things happening to you that were just not fair. As a result, you kind of built up a wall at one point in your life and that could have cut you off from opportunities and stuff, but you've really tried to heal, <clears throat> excuse me, heal, grow, change that, move past that, release those pains of the past and not let them close you off to new opportunities. And then there's like this overthinking um, and quite possibly, um, yeah, it could be that you're, you have a very overactive mind potentially and which can be good because it can come up with all sorts of ideas and, um, you know, things that can go down a really beautiful path, but it can also lead to overthinking when it's like time to go to bed, for example, <laughs> or, you know, overthinking when it comes to negative thoughts that just maybe play on loop and maybe at some time, like at some points you probably just feel like it's maybe even out of control with uh, the overthinking. You also may overthink when it comes to your decisions. So it's like, that's quite interesting as well because it's almost like people on the exterior see you as somebody that's confident and maybe makes, com um, makes decisions very confidently, but on the inside, it feels like you feel quite the opposite. You may overthink every decision, um, and even once you make a decision, you overthink, did I make that right decision? Um, I also feel like, yeah, maybe at some points you could also like maybe um, overthink your intuition Um, cause it feels almost like communication to the divine is something that you could overthink as well. So yeah, maybe even like there's certain times when like you're getting maybe a very intense, um, intuitive hit or download about something and you're, you're maybe confused as to, you know, maybe you should share that information or keep it to yourself or... Something along those lines. But at the same time, with the way that they came out in this direction, I feel like that's a very positive thing. So even though you may see your overactive mind as something that is probably like a double-edged sword, you know? Um, Maybe you're trying to sort of embrace the fact that you have an overactive mind in the positive way where it's like, oh, I have all these wonderful ideas and stuff. Maybe you even um, start to journal or do something that like allows you to have an outlet for all those ideas. Yeah, I feel like you have a very strong connection to the divine and people may be able to see that as well. I really do think that even though you may question your intuition or intuitive downloads and stuff, you do ultimately try to kind of go with the flow of things and kind of trust in spirit is what I'm picking up. Like you ultimately do want to enter a flow state, but maybe you kind of struggle to enter that flow state at times. Yeah, that five of wands to me is speaking of like that internal conflict of like, am I making the right decisions? Am I, is my intuition correct? Or am I Delulu maybe? Maybe you struggle with that idea at times especially if you don't have any like physical proof of what your intuition is telling you. Yeah. There definitely feels like a little bit 
of a back and forth within you. So it's like, even if you have this calm, cool exterior, I feel like on the inside, you very much kind of struggle sometimes. But the last card that came out is the strength card. Um, so I think that you do a really good job at like overcoming those more negative parts of maybe those doubts that you experience or that overthinking or that feeling of conflict within you. Um, you do a really good job at correcting that when it comes up, I feel. You try really hard to be as confident as possible and try your best to sort of fulfill that role. Um, it does almost feel like maybe you are sort of aware of how people perceive you and so you almost want to maybe maintain that image. And not necessarily in a superficial way, but rather just like so. Maybe you feel like you would let people down if you didn't maintain that sort of image. I don't think that would be the case necessarily, but that may be how you kind of feel inside at times. But overall, you do a really good job at like trying your best to achieve balance within yourself and overcoming those feelings of doubt or overthinking, confusion. And people almost like don't even see that part of it, it feels like. Wow. Um, with the Five of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, I feel like you definitely could have come from a place of insecurity, maybe starting at childhood. You also may have been a sort of like an outsider as like maybe a kid or just in general in life, feeling like you're kind of on the outside looking in in a lot of ways, that you're different. Maybe in the past that wasn't a good thing, being different, but maybe you've come to sort of accept that part of you and maybe even sort of embrace it to a degree too like finding your difference yeah embracing that sense of diff being different yeah okay let's go on to the three of swords these and thank you spirit we have for that three of swords these and thank you it's two Interesting. Okay, I think. Okay. Wow. Clarifying that Three of Swords. Uh, Queen of Wands. So you're coming up again as that Queen of Wands. Yeah, you do come across as confident and very much self assured. So that's kind of funny. Um, because it's almost like, I don't know if you would even identify as that, but that's what other people see. Um, we have the Judgment card, Death card, Ooh, okay. um, Four of Cups, Nine of Cups, okay, cool, um, Chariot card, and as I was picking that up, Magician card fell out, so I'll just put that with the ones that came out. Wow, this is a lot of good cards for um, the Three of Swords. I really do feel like, oh my gosh. Whoa. I feel like a major sense of you reinventing yourself. I also feel like you've changed your own narrative. You may have identified in the past as somebody that was hurt but I feel like almost like this sense of like, you're like the opposite of hurt now. It's like you're powerful. I don't know, I don't know if I'm like articulating that the right way, but it's like really cool. 
because it's almost like maybe at one point you sort of saw yourself as a victim but it's like now you're like the winner like or the uh maybe like the underdog that comes into some sort of success this is so interesting too that after that ooh, after that through that oh my goodness i can't talk after that queen of wands we have the judgment card and the death card and it was funny that the death card came after the judgment because it's like yeah in the in the way of like a storyline you know you usually die before the first judgment right first judgment is after death so it's like um but the way it came out was that it was judgment and then death so there's something about well, first off, I do think that you did experience judgment at one point in your life, probably when you were a child, for being different. That could have also caused a lot of like hurt in your heart. You could have felt very um, ostr ostr ostrich, <laughs> ostracized, I want to say is how that's said. Ostracized. Like, you know, othered, outsider, like I was getting with the Five of Pentacles. You could have also been in, oh, I'm kind of picking up on this storyline of like, maybe you did want to fit in at one point in your life. Um, but it's like, you eventually saw that you were just never going to fit in. And it's interesting because it's like, this death card is usually speaking about some sort of major transformation. And although I do think that you did go through a major transformation in terms of maybe re- writing your narrative about being a victim and then suddenly coming into a more powerful image of yourself. I feel like that death card also is kind of like you just embracing more so your identity, growing that confidence around who you are rather than trying to hide who you are or mask who you are or pretend to yeah, like maybe you even tried to fit into a, a mold that just was not who you were supposed to be. And so instead of trying so hard to, you know, be that square that's trying to jam itself into a, a circle, circular um, hole, you know, it's just like, Yeah, you're just like not gonna do that anymore. You're not gonna try to, to force yourself into any sort of box or anything like that. I don't know there's something about this death card about really you embracing who you are what you were meant to do like the role in which you are meant to play in this life there's something about you embracing I almost even feel like maybe you almost there's like almost this feeling of like wanting to be normal wanting to blend in wanting to be like everyone else at one point in your life. But then there's like the eventuality of you realizing I was never meant to fit in. I was never meant to be like everyone else. I'm meant to stand out. I'm meant to be my own person. I'm meant to to be here for, like there's a specific like reason or purpose or something about you that you are embracing now. Cause like, there's just like, I'm getting about the death figure here, you know? He's just showing up to his job, you know? 
everybody around him is reacting to death in a way of like, you know, there's fear attached, there's sadness attached maybe. Um, you know, there's like, oh, I don't wanna die, you know? But death itself is probably very neutral about this because, you know, this is his nine to five, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's just like, because it's not personal to death here, you know? Like, death's not going into this place and taking away people's lives for the fun of it or for any reason, really, other than that's just what he's meant to do. And I feel like you may have had a moment where you realized, and it could have come after a feeling of heartbreak, have come after a period of you trying really hard to fit in and just realizing I'm never going to fit in and I have to embrace who I am which also the Queen of Wands embraces who she is as well um, the black cat is usually like a superstition um, but she has the black cat anyways because that's who like what she likes so she very much embraces who she is and does not care if anybody doesn't like it I feel like you came to this point eventually where you're just like, I kind of, and it's not even that you have to embrace this person that you're meant to be, but rather like life will probably go a lot smoother if I embrace who I am rather than keep consistently trying to shove that square peg into a round hole, you know? Because, yeah, you live that part. You live that part of trying to fit in. Of wanting to fit in, trying to fit in, failing to fit in. And it's like you eventually realize, I'm just meant to do something different. And maybe other people are going to misinterpret that. Maybe other people are not going to like my purpose. Maybe other people are not going to like the energy I bring to the function is what I'm getting. Um, you know, cause like, yeah, like if death shows up to a party, it's gonna be kind of a party pooper, but like that's our perspective of it. Death himself, if he has a gender, um, he's just showing up to the party because that's his job. Like he's just there to do, like, and I, I feel like, yeah, very much like that, which made you so unique and stand out in such a specific way is your purpose or it's connected to your purpose or it's like I feel like you realize like this sense of like sort of needing to embrace who you are and also it could be in a very major way because it is the death card that I'm getting all of this from like, it just feels like, I don't know, embracing, like finally embracing who you are and just doing what you're here to do. I don't think like that you do anything negative or that your purpose is anything inherently negative, like the death card. Like, I don't think you're going to be, you know, doing anything super extreme, but it's almost just like you're embracing who you are and it's like you're also starting to not give a damn if anybody has anything to say about it <laughs> you know what i mean it's beautiful like i actually really like this because it's like this is all coming as a result of you being hurt being ostracized and just outcast and just outsider and just never being able to fit in people probably uh, picked on you for not being able to fit in maybe um, certain things about yourself were picked on but it's like eventually you just reach this point where it's just like, yeah, I am different. So what? <laughs> and also being different is a beautiful thing. Um, and it's actually very beautiful too with this four of cups followed by the nine of cups because it's like, this could have also come very much like, this could be attached to your self, um, confidence, self-worth, because I almost feel like 
when you step into that mode of embracing who you truly are and what makes you so different, you start to also realize that maybe when you were sort of trying to fit in or you were more insecure about who you were or are, maybe you started to let people in that were not serving you uh, or let situations in, people, places, things, yeah, that just were not good for you, not on your level, not worthy of you. And so you kind of had to learn to put up boundaries, have standards, be picky and choosy with your energy. And it's like, as a result of that, you are coming into a time of like reaching probably like a great amount of emotional contentment, maybe even feeling like your, your wishes are coming true. So again, something about embracing who you are and your purpose here could also lead you to fulfilling wishes in this lifetime. Like it feels like your superpower could literally unlock doors for you. And your superpower is simply you being you. Embracing the, the things that make you unique. And it could lead you to like a great sense of happiness. And especially with that magician following that Nine of Cups. You probably have also, and this is also I think, part of manifestation is truly accepting yourself and fully understanding how worthy you are, like how much value you contain. And just like the world is at your fingertips. And like now you finally see it. You feel, you see the potential now. And I feel like this is all a storyline for you. And this is going to be a storyline that I feel like is going to be in the public eye in some way. Like it feels like, I, I'm not sure exactly what your purpose is, but hey, it could be like something that's eventually like printed in the newspaper or I don't know, articles and stuff like written about, you know, your transformation or your life story. Like it feels very much like this is big stuff and you're manifesting big stuff in your life. Also, like also like it's insane the, the amount of major arcana clarifying this three of swords here. Like you literally have switched around your life. You're probably also very much unrecognizable to the people that used to know you when you were younger, when you were trying to fit in. Like nowadays, it feels like you are a completely different person. They wouldn't even know you if they walked by you on the street <laughs> is really what I'm getting. But the chariot card at the bottom of the deck, I think you know exactly where you're going, where you're headed, what your purpose, like there's something about now you know. Now you know where to go, what you're doing, who you are even maybe and what your purpose is. Like, it's like you have this sense of clarity and it's almost like nothing is holding you back anymore. If you were ever held back at any point in your life, it's like, like literally, like it's like a dam that has been broken. Like, it's just like, nothing's gonna hold you back anymore. Maybe things tried to hold you back in the past, but it's just like, you've, you've definitely moved past that completely at this point in your life. Okay, let's go on to the High Priestess now. Please and thank you, Spirit. What do you have for that High Priestess as to how are other people perceiving the collective's intuition? Please and thank you, Spirit. Ooh. Thank you, Spirit. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so clarifying that high priestess, the first one was the three of swords. So that's interesting. It could be very much related to what we were just talking about with that um, last three of swords that we were clarifying. Um, oh my gosh, this is insane. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and then we have the Two of Cups. That's like very much soulmate energy coming into union with a soulmate even. Um, King of Pentacles. That could be your energy or somebody that is attached to you. The Hierophant could be very much a um, traditional commitment of some sort. Could be, I mean, something could be building to marriage potentially, but we'll see. Ten of Cups, like happily ever after, like okay. Um, the Hanged Man at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, you have a lot of wisdom to you now. I really do think that that Three of Swords there, underneath that High Priestess and the Hanged Man are very much linked. You have been in very uncomfortable situations throughout your life. I feel like it's been many different circumstances, especially with that Three of Swords, probably maybe at least three major events in your life that have really forced you into some very uncomfortable situations. But through these uncomfortable situations, you have grown perspectives that are much more enlightened. I feel like you have a, a, a grander sense of things now um, in the way of like, your perspective I feel like is much more, to an extent removed, but like, I don't know, you have like an eagle eye or a higher perspective of things, like a more distance. You have an ability to distance yourself from certain things. Yeah, like say, you know, you're going through some sort of conflict with a family member. You have a way of like maybe taking your ego out of the situation. Like maybe taking a step back and maybe even realizing like, oh, this person's just attacking my ego and that's what they want me to do is respond in an ego, egoic way. Um, but then you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just take a step back and, you know, maybe recenter myself. Like there's something about you that is so mature, grounded, but also enlightened. And it's like, I think that's what people really see. And they see you as somebody that has gone through it. And it, I feel like people are like, I don't know. I don't know if it's people believe that you have this high sense of intuition or this very heightened sense of intuition as a result of going through so much stuff. Some people might think that. Or... There's the other part where it's like people might see that because you went through so much stuff or that you went through things that going through those circumstances might have helped heighten your intuition or bring those powers maybe out of you in some way. Like people definitely see your ability being attached in some way to your past and the pain that you've experienced. Maybe specifically in love too. You could have had like a very, very tumultuous love life in the past. But it's also like this feeling of like, people know or see that you've had that bad, you know, rough past, but it's like, you never let that, um, lead you astray and never let you or you never let that take you down a darker path it's like you let that move you up upwards and forwards you know and it this is like actually very beautiful because the two of cups following that three of swords if you did experience like a lot of like tumultuousness in your love life and like a lot of chaos mistreatment pain you definitely could be known as like a hopeless romantic or maybe that's like the vibes you give off because it's like 
you could be hurt <laughs> like a hundred times in love, but you're gonna be ready for love a hundred and one times. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, no matter how many times you go through it, it's like you still, ah, <laughs> that's hitting me really in the emotions. Cause it's like, you just have such a beautiful, it's like you have a fighter spirit to you, but it's so kind and sweet and pure and gentle. Like, ugh. Like, and I also feel like when we talk about the fighter spirit, we don't talk about those ways in which we can fight in a soft way gentle way keeping ourselves soft keeping ourselves gentle and open it takes a lot of strength it takes a lot of power energy motivation like it just feels like you're just never gonna give up on like the belief that your soulmate is out there that your counterpart is out there somewhere. Maybe you don't know where they're at right now, but you're okay. Like, I don't know. Like, you just know, like, I don't know. It's either like a deep sense of knowing within you that like your person is out there or maybe you're just incredibly optimistic when it comes to love. Like, it just feels like, but it's so resilient, you know what I mean? Because it's like, you've been through it, I feel it. I feel that you've really been through it. But it's just like, I still am going to keep going. I may be bruised and battered, but I'm not going to give up on, you know, thinking that love doesn't exist or, you know, love is BS or, you know, people don't love or, I don't know. There's like a million reasons why people kind of give up on love, but it's like, that's definitely not you. And now that I'm seeing all of that, especially with that message I was getting about that fighter spirit, this King of Pentacles, I think is for sure you, this is your energy because that fighter spirit is very much part of the King of Pentacles because I want to say he's the only King that has a suit of armor underneath his cloak and you can see his little armored foot sticking out on that stone or something right there and so he's ready for battle if need be but as you can see his eyes are closed he's chilling like he's not worried about it but if he needs to fight he will fight but he's good you know he's confident he's grounded he's secure in himself also he's a king so like he's had that experience that lived experience and again it's like I, I honestly feel like too, maybe your confidence grows with age or like the more you get to know yourself, the more you like, you see what you're capable of. It's like, it builds onto this stability, security within yourself. So it's like, oh, it's just such a beautiful energy. Like, I don't know how to even explain this energy because it's like, I feel like there's like a deep inner knowing and it's, I honestly want to say it's like past the ego. I think your ego may try to distract you at times from this like optimism and this security, stability. Because it's almost like this certainty or just knowing that I'm good. I'm enough. And uh, I'm going to meet my partner someday. And we're going to have everything I've always dreamed of. Maybe even more. This is so incredibly beautiful. Oh my gosh. I feel like this hanged man is really just like... I feel like I don't know how to ugh. the human language or the English language sometimes can only go so far when it comes to expressing these 
messages that come through. Well, actually, with that Hierophant card, you could be somebody that wants marriage. Especially with that Ten of Cups following it, you could be one, you know, one of those people that wants to have a partner and a family and a home and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. You could very much be a family person, but I'm almost picking up on this feeling. So either family means a lot to you, or family means a lot to you because you lacked maybe a sense of family growing up. Or maybe you just came from a dysfunctional family. But it also, the loneliness I'm picking up on could just be due to being othered by peers growing up for being different. Um, but yeah, it's literally so beautiful. I honestly also feel like because of that, this all clarifying the high priestess, I feel like your intuition really wants to tell you to not give up in love. So if you've been feeling like you really want to give up in love and you're just like, maybe it's not for me in this lifetime, I don't know, please don't because like, you are eventually going to meet your person and they're going to be so perfect for you. I also feel like with that King of Pentacles, this could happen at a time when you're feeling very secure. So if you focus on your career or whatever it is your purpose in this lifetime, I feel like the more you focus on that, it's actually going to bring you towards that person. I don't know exactly how, but it feels like it's connected. Ah, because it's like your dreams are going to be fulfilled, especially when it comes to love, especially when it comes to family. Like you will have your happily ever after and I think some bonus good stuff as well. Trusting in that inevitability, I feel like is gonna be very important for you. Oh, I just kind of want to stay in that energy because it feels so nice and happy. The hanged man, though, at the bottom of the deck is definitely, like, I think part of, like, it's really just showing how that part of you, that resilient part of you is just so strong. No matter how many times you're in situations that may be crappy or crummy or make you feel bad, you still have this ability to see things from a different perspective. Even if things are not ideal in that situation, you can dream up a whole future in which that thing is no longer an obstacle. Like, I don't know. It's like your brain, your imagination, it helps you manifest. Okay, let's go on to the Six of Swords. Please and thank you, Spirit. What do you have for that Six of Swords? Please and thank you. Six of Swords. What do others um, or how do others, <laughs> uh, what is my question even? I forgot. Something flipped over though. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Maybe that's the that. Ooh. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Okay. Well, cards came out anyways, even if I can't remember my question. <laughs> I think it was just like, how do other people see your intuition or something? <laughs> Or perceive it. That's what it was. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> the cards that came out. Um, Eight of Swords. Oh, this is interesting. This is clarifying the Six of Swords, by the way. So we have the Eight of Swords, Eight of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. I did not realize that it was all eights until just now. So eight, eight, eight. which I want to say is like a very important um, number, 888. I don't remember what it means, but I think it's something important. I'll try and remember to edit it in or add it in when I'm editing, if I can find the meaning to it. 
probably something about infinity maybe abundance anyways uh yeah so eight 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 could be important or eights in general maybe you just see a lot of recurring eights or something but yeah so if it's clarifying that six of swords the six of swords is really about moving out of a place that is not ideal into a place that is way more ideal and this is i mean pretty straightforward like you were in a time place situation or dealing with somebody that very much whatever the circumstance was kept you in your head made you feel trapped stuck but maybe you had more power of getting out of that situation than you maybe thought at one point i see you definitely leaving whatever that was behind I think you realized at one point that if this was a person, they're no longer emotionally fulfilling you. If this is a situation, environment, you're like, this is no longer serving me. I got to leave this behind and I got to do me. Like, I got to move on with my life if I want to see improvement here. And it feels like that was what you were divinely meant to do. I also feel like run, uh, running, no, <laughs> walking away from that allowed you to be able to maybe harness your energy into your goals, maybe um, your, your physical world, like, you know, investing in that, investing in your hobbies, projects, things that really mean something to you. This could also be definitely you working on your purpose, working towards your purpose, towards achieving your purpose here. Like it feels like something that was not ideal in a sort of roundabout way sort of led you to your purpose. May not have been very fun, may not have been very nice, but it's like something that kept you in your head overthinking that you eventually walked away from somehow led you to your purpose, your goals, your aspirations, whatever it is that you want to build your life into, could have been inspiring for you. I feel like I keep getting um, a autobiography or biography sort of, no, it feels like autobiography, yeah. Feels like an autobiography sort of vibe I'm getting. Like life search, uh, life situations that are like sort of like maybe remarkable or maybe not even super remarkable, but just noteworthy in some way. And like documenting that could lead to some sort of success or that could be part of your purpose. And I almost see you like channeling that energy into that. Um, bottom of the deck, three of pentacles. Honestly, it feels like something about building a foundation up. Um, yeah, people very much see you as allowing your intuition to guide you out of situations that don't serve you and move towards things that do. It almost even is like a key to the door, like a key that unlocks a door or something. And that door leads to like your purpose or abundance. Like, I think that people very much see that, like that, that is how your intuition is leading you. With the three of pentacles, I feel like you, there's some sort of focus on a foundation. So maybe you like, maybe something happened with a foundation, maybe a sort of like a foundation crumbled at one point in your life. And so you had to rebuild up a foundation for yourself. Maybe rebuild yourself even from the inside out. You could have lost yourself, a, um, 
yourself, your identity, and had to rebuild or find who you were again, if you lost yourself in a situation or a person. I also feel like people see you as somebody that knows what they're talking about and it's because of your lived experiences. I don't know, there's something about you having the blueprint. Like you have a solution to something, I don't know. Also, you may just inspire other people with the way that you do your life, you know? Your story could be, be very inspiring. Okay, let's go on to the Fool card. Please and thank you, Spirit. What do we have for that Fool card as to whoops, how do people proceed with the leftist intuition? Please and thank you. Okay, thank you. See that coming. The full card clarified by the Emperor. The Empress, Page of Wands came out this way. We got Emperor and Empress, baby. That's a divine match. Ooh, okay. And then we have the Hanged Man, Temperance. Page of Pentacles, bottom of the deck. Oh, is there another one that flipped over? Oh, maybe not. Um, thought number, another one that flipped over in there, but no. Okay, uh, Four of Wands. Very much about a union, potentially. So. that this full card is really talking about how people are seeing that your intuition is bringing you to a new beginning. So whether that be you being this emperor, I feel like this could very much be you being pulled towards your divine match. So maybe you pursued this divine match or maybe reverse the roles because we both or we all Regardless of gender, I believe that we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. So, either you could be pursuing somebody, or they could be pursuing you, and it's because of some sort of intuitive hit or download or just pinging is what I'm getting. Like, it's just like pinging off. Like, it's almost like you're... How do I even say that? Uh, like a cell tower, you know, it's just like, I don't know. There's just like, there's like an invisible force that is drawing two people together is what I'm getting. And it's clear that what is desired is a new beginning. There's a lot of optimism with this path with this match here whoever is in this emperor role which could definitely be the viewer the person in the collective that i'm tapping into or it could be an emperor that's coming towards you either way somebody here is motivated to move towards this empress very enthusiastically and the main motivator is because Honestly, well, there is the optimism and like there's just so much potential for growth here. But there is, I think, also something very lighthearted, very childlike, especially because that fool card is like there's like a little chick in the tree. Like a little birdie baby, <laughs> birdie baby. Um, so something about being a child. So I really do think that either... Well, the Empress, you know, she, she's she been known to be preggers and have the babies. Um, so, 
this union could bring about offspring, if that is your thing. Um, don't know why I said offspring. That sounds so weird. <laughs> that sounds so sterile. Anyways. Uh, I think that there is a connection with the inner children. Okay, that sounds weird too. <laughs> The inner child, like I feel like the two of you are going to have a connection that, you know, if it doesn't result in <laughs> children, um, it could be, well, honestly, even if it does involve children, it could also just be speaking about the inner children within the both of you connecting, feeling safe with one another embracing that having fun yeah having that innocent sort of fun like it feels like a fun connection like this is not going to be a boring connection it feels like um it's so interesting the hanged man this is an interesting message but like well for one there could be delays in the an eventual coming together between the two of you so maybe it's long distance maybe it's um, online dating uh, I'm trying to think of other things well maybe there's just other three-dimensional obstacles that will necessarily delay this coming together but there's like a knowing so even if it doesn't start out ideally, and maybe it's a little bit uncomfortable at first because maybe it's like you have this very intense connection. You're like, oh, I wanna, I wanna see you. I wanna get to know you. I wanna blah blah blah. But then it's like, oh, but this, this, and this will prolong, you know, and delay our meeting. But it's like at the same time, you know, there's very much an enlightenment about like I know that this person could potentially be my significant um, other, like my soulmate, my my partner, my, my main person there. Because it feels very much like a healing connection. Like this feels very positive for everybody involved here. And it feels like, yes. Especially after that past you've experienced, this is going to be healing. But I'm getting a mirroring energy. I think that you both have probably had really rough pasts in love. And so it's like the two of you are meant to come together to heal together. And it's like heal your broken hearts together within this divine union. With the Page of Pentacles, they definitely could start out slow. Maybe just a conversation of, hey, let's get to know each other. Hey, do you want to um, start chatting, get to know each other, learn about each other? Like, especially if it's like an online thing or long distance. It's like, hey, let's, you know, let's work on, you know, building some sort of, um, at the very least, a friendship. Like, getting to know each other for sure. Like, it definitely could start out slow, but it's like there's an intensity of the attraction, it feels like. And I really do feel like, especially if you're both showing up as the emperor and the empress, it's like there's going to be this undeniable connection. And maybe neither one of you really say it, but it's like you feel it. Like, okay. Like, this person could actually be my person. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like you both kind of temper it which I feel like is the, is the right thing to do. You don't want to go too too hard and heavy too fast, you know? Um, that four of wands. I'm just saying, this could be the real deal. This actually could be a story that... Ooh. I'm getting a message about... I mean, if it applies, sure. Um social media couple could potentially be like or maybe you guys meet in like such a strange way that it like your story is like really well known or like people like to hear your story or something um but it's like definitely coming together 
and celebrating that and I feel like other people are gonna celebrate that too like it's like I feel like yeah like people see this happening or they will I do think that one or both of you could be in the public eye or something or it doesn't even have to be necessarily the public eye it could just be like well known in your community you know maybe locally but it's like other people see this happening and I honestly I get like this feeling of like the two of you like look really good together or like go really well together or something maybe you have like a lot of similarities or something because I feel like people are really happy for you like the two of you coming together there's something kind of wholesome about it about your connection it's it's kind of wholesome and sweet I think that like this is gonna be some sort of love story a love story for the ages is what I'm hearing that sounds a little dramatic but that's cute okay let's go on to the eight of cups now please and thank you spirit what do you got for the eight of cups Ooh. Mm. are you sure that's a bit much okay I'll take it Ooh boy. Interesting. Okay. Clarifying that Eight of Cups. We got the Moon card coming out in this direction. Something that was in the dark or uncertain actually motivated you to do something. To potentially leave something behind here. Maybe somebody was doing something sneaky in the dark. What you couldn't see. Oh yeah. Um, then we got the two of, of wands, ace of cups, nine of pentacles, four of swords, ten of wands, bottom of the deck, high priestess, hello, hello. So, yeah, like literally, actually, that's what I'm getting. Somebody was doing something sneaky in the dark where you couldn't see it, but I think you're ish. Yeah, that's what it was. Your intuition told you about something that was going on in the dark. You didn't have evidence for it, but you knew it was going on. And so you left whatever that was. It feels kind of like a person. I, I'm just going to say, it feels like a situation. Somebody was doing something sneaky behind the scenes. You left that person out in the dust. And I feel like that's exactly what you were supposed to do. You trusted your intuition. I see. Oh, yeah. Because honestly... Yes, you just like, I see this, like you're in contempt. Oh my gosh. I have so many, they come through so strongly sometimes that my mouth cannot catch up to the like thoughts I'm having. Okay, two of wands. I see you literally contemplating. Like you had some sort of epiphany about something or someone, or just like realized that somebody was doing something sketchy. And I see you just like really taking some time to think about this. And it's like, I see you just being like, there's got to be more than these types of people. Do you know what I mean? It really feels like, I don't know, like almost giving up, but like giving up on maybe a specific type of demographic is what I'm getting. I don't know why. Like maybe, or maybe in like a, like, I don't know, in a certain way, a certain vicinity even like maybe locally because it's just like you're like there's got to be more than this I deserve better and actually that's what the ace of cups is telling me this feels like an, a self-love card in this context because it's just like you're like is this really what I'm worthy of is this really what all of my hard work is amounting to because I feel like you're somebody, especially if this had to do with love, you're somebody that's incredibly loving, have more than enough love to go around and more than enough passion to go around. So it's just like, why, if I have so much to offer, why am I accepting so little from other people? And I think your self-love was like, ding, ding, ding. Like you're way too good for whatever this bullshit was. Oh, BS. And then I see you kind of entering your single era where you're just like feeding your security, what you got going on, the stuff that makes you feel comfortable, stuff that brings up your finances, like projects, 
career. Like, just rocking it in your singleness. Also, there could be some sort of success as well. Yeah, following that. Like, when you start focusing all your energy onto yourself, success. Four of Swords, you taking care of yourself. Like, I'm getting, I gotta do me, I gotta put me first. I like that, though. And then, Ten of Wands. So, this is actually kind of funny, because I'm getting a few different messages with this. First off, I think that you're somebody that has carried way than way more than your fair share in relationships. I think you're probably the person that carried everything in relationships. And I feel like you got very little thanks for that. <laughs> That's probably the worst part. <laughs> it's like, I can handle all the weight of the world, but like, can I get some appreciation at least? Like, damn. You were just like, you know what? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing all of that? Why am I putting in so much work for people that literally do not even give me anything in return? But the other part, and I think Spirit's trying to be funny with this message, is like, it's so hard to carry around. Oh my gosh. I'm going to just say it. It's going to be a little bit of a silly message, but it's like, it's so hard carrying around this sense of humor and this badass is what I'm getting. <laughs> like, it's just like, you, like, I literally am seeing it as like all of these wands. Usually it's like a, a card of being overburdened, the 10 of wands. But in this context, I'm actually getting like, it's you realizing how many good qualities you have that you're just carrying around like it ain't nothing. I feel like everybody else can see these wonderful qualities, but maybe you struggle to, or you did struggle to see those wonderful qualities. But the more you take some time to pour into yourself, love yourself, focus on yourself, you're like, you know, I actually have it going on. So what was I doing with those scrubs in the past? Like literally, I almost, I'm like, I'm literally getting like, oh, it's so hard carrying around this, this, this great sense of humor, this intelligence, this, you know, like literally, like I feel like you're kind of gassing yourself up at one point and you're just like, what am I doing? I'm being silly by like entertaining these people that are not worthy of me or my time or my effort or my energy, like literally straight up, go away people. Yeah, you trusting your intuition your intuitive hits, downloads, leads you to honestly rediscovering your sense of self, your self-love, valuing yourself, your worthiness. I think people see that too. People see how you let your intuition guide you to move away from the things that don't serve you and move towards the things that do. And it's like your intuition can serve as a tool for self-love, it feels like. Okay, let's go on to that Six of Pentacles. Please and thank you, Spirit. We got for that Six of Pentacles. Please and thank you. Okay, let's see. Ooh. Clarifying that Six of Pentacles, the Devil card, the Hermit card. This is interesting. Also, bottom of the deck, Four of Wands. So, oh, I think that people can sometimes perceive you as being a little bit manipulative, but I don't know. Well, for one, people are going to perceive things differently than how you see the things that you do. I, okay, that probably doesn't make any sense. Let me try that again. Um, people are going to project their own 
thoughts and opinions onto you, regardless of your intentions. And kind of what I'm getting here is like, because of your intuition, people could see the potential for you manipulating people, circumstances with that intuition. But I don't think you do. I honestly think that it's mostly just manifestation and a manipulation of the energies to manifest things, but not in a bad way, not in a, manip not in a manipulative way of manipulating people and doing things messily. I don't think that that's your style at all, actually. But it's like there is a potential there. You're also seen as somebody that's very wise, experienced, somebody that kind of knows what they're talking about. Probably especially when it comes to spirituality and your intuition. And so it's like with you having that sort of hidden knowledge or knowledge of the unknown is what I'm getting. Um, people see like there is a potential for you to sort of abuse that knowledge or use that knowledge to your own use, own betterment, own um, success. There also could be a sort of idea. And honestly, I don't know, this feels like a stretch, but maybe some people might misunderstand your intuition to be evil, but I really, I think that's probably a very rare opinion if anybody has that sort of opinion about your abilities. And that would be just somebody that just completely does not understand intuition. But it's like pe people see you receiving things and so they may see that as like a result of you manipulating through you using your intuition. But honestly, I think that's just you manifesting and I don't think that that's really... Yeah, I feel like you just, you know, use the opportunities that are given to you or offered to you. Um, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I feel like that's mostly maybe people coming out of a place of envy or jealousy when they see you taking off or things working out for you, things paying off for you. I'm also getting um, oh yes, uh, with the devil card, you could um, experience a lot of people being very drawn to you in a schmexual way. Um, there's like a lot of like people giving you that sort of attention with the hermit card. It could also be that people may be a little bit envious of like the education or, um, the knowledge. It doesn't even have to be like a literal education. It could just be that wisdom, knowledge, could be simply life experiences that people sort of envy about you because it's like that wisdom that is gained through the gathering of that information or knowledge. People could sort of envy that as well. Feels like a bit of envy in this part of the reading. Um, and with that four of wands at the bottom of the deck, I think that people could also be sort of jealous of your romantic offers. Um, people maybe think that you have an easier time in love than you do um, because it's like your energy may be captivating. Um, you may be very attractive, your intuition could lead you in good directions. Yeah, uh, so people may think it's easier for you to find love or, you know, people m might think that love is just given to you because, yeah, it just feels like there's like a, a definitely a demographic of people that kind of see your blessings and they are very much envying those blessings and they may sort of build up narratives about how you receive those blessings but it feels just like rumors and kind of just like honestly just low vibrational stuff like it doesn't even feel like it's really even taken seriously it's just like okay you're obviously jealous of those per that person's blessings like you're just projecting okay let's go on to the sun please and thank you spirit what do you have for that sun card please and thank you Beautiful. Okay, clarifying the sun card. We have three of cups 
and the Six of Wands. These are both cards of celebration. Clarifying the Sun card, which is all about happiness, pure bliss, practically. Your intuition is leading you to your ultimate happiness into a time of being celebrated. Okay, I'm like, somebody that I'm tapping into is actually coming into a huge amount of success because that's been a recurring message in this reading. You're gonna be celebrated for your intuition, your purpose, you going towards your purpose, fulfilling that purpose, like hitting some sort of goal, celebrating with your friends and family, being celebrated by like the wider public or wider community. It's going to make you feel so incredibly happy and other people are gonna see this happening. And it's all coming through your intuition, high priestess at the bottom of the deck. I literally am getting goosebumps and I'm wearing a sweater. I should not be getting goosebumps. Don't know if you can even see it, but like, wow. Some, okay, yeah, that's definitely confirmation. Somebody is coming into some major success. Whoever I'm talking to, somebody out there is coming into some success, I'm just saying. It's gonna make you feel real good too. Super happy, celebrating with your loved ones, feeling on top of the world, really. You're gonna be like, yeah. I achieved that. No big deal or anything. Um, I'm just kidding. You're probably going to be way more humble than that. But actually, don't be humble. Be proud of your goals and your achievements. <sighs> and be proud of your intuition for leading you down this path. You deserve it. Okay, let's go on to the Empress. Please and thank you. What do we got for that Empress card? Please and thank you. Empress card, please and thank you. Anything for the Empress card, please and thank you. Anything for the Empress card. Okay. We got a something. We got a something here. Yeah, we got a something. Okay. Clarifying that uh, the, the Empress card. Uh, uh, to, <laughs> I get like... I start to already get downloads before I even finish what I'm saying. Um, the Empress card, clarified by the Two of Swords. Wheel of Fortune. Ace of Swords. Justice card at the bottom of the deck. Okay, you're going to be coming into this time of extreme power and just radiance and things like really looking up for you. You could get in your head a little bit about it, not going to lie. Uh feels kind of like imposter syndrome to a degree. Um, definitely could be a, a sense of like feeling conflicted about this upgrade. Um, or it feels kind of like a promotion and it could just be a promotion in terms of how people see you, view you. Like it could be like a moment of feeling like a, a success and people perceiving you as a success. My tongue keeps... Ugh not working um but it could cause you to feel a little bit out of your element maybe just kind of conflicted feeling like maybe it's not meant for you but I feel like it is it's just maybe you getting a little bit in your head about it could be triggering for the ego in some way uh, the Wheel of Fortune, though, it feels like this is happening in divine timing, especially when it, um, specifically when it's supposed to. Like if things haven't been going your way for some time, now they are. Ace of Swords. You could have some sort of message or clear communication about this up-leveling of how you're being perceived. Maybe you get a letter or just like a moment of recognition from somebody or something that lets you know that you're entering this era of being incredibly powerful, being seen as somebody that's incredibly powerful and somebody that is able to create their life, you know, in such a beautiful way. And somebody that just radiates, you know, just beauty and heavenly energy truly it feels like it's coming as a strong sense of karmic justice 
Like it feels like things are finally gonna start working out for you, especially if things have not been going your way for some time. The scales of justice are being balanced out. So if you are coming into a time of success and you have that feeling of sort of um, imposter syndrome, I think that you are exactly where you're supposed to be and you're embodying the energy in which you are supposed to be embodying. And you deserve all of it. You deserve all of the blessings that are coming towards you. All the success. All of the recognition. And honestly, I think that you're going to meet your soulmate out of it as well. Like this is just a bunch of really good stuff. Wow. Your intuition is really going to lead you to some major, beautiful places. I think that that is actually a perfect place to stop. <laughs> I know that this reading is probably a million hours long, but that's, that's okay, right? That's fine. Um, anyways, <laughs> I hope that you liked this and that it resonated. If it resonated, feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you subscribe, you can become a part of the Hive Collective. Because my name is B. Bees live in halves, and you can become an honorary bee like me, and we can be a little bee family together. Um, if you like my readings and you'd like to see more, be sure to click that bell icon down below so that YouTube actually notifies you next time that I upload. And thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.